Hey everybody, so, um, this should be a very brief video, but I was just having a little conversation with Holy Spirit and recalling, um, what I would call, um, foreshadowing, uh, prophetic foreshadowing, Holy Spirit foreshadowing, um, and it's kind of cool and fascinating and intriguing, and I just thought I would share the concept, um, so that maybe you can be aware and, and mindful and maybe look backwards and be mindful looking forward. Um, so when I was in grade school, they had us do, um, you know, each of us had to do a state report. And um, I, I literally just woke up like half an hour ago, so bear with me here. I look a little... <laughs> anyway, um, and... I don't remember how it came to be, but somehow I ended up doing my state report on the state of Georgia. And, um, my family, um, well, on my, my mother's side, my, my mother had custody of me when I was growing up, um, on that side, that household, because I had two households, my father's household, um, was different in many ways, but my mother's side, uh, we would often have secondhand clothes. Um, I think I shared on here how at one point my mother even went and got me underwear from a secondhand store, <laughs> which my my father and my stepmother uh, freaked out when they found out about that. But anyway, um, my stepfather would often come home from work with a big garbage bag full of clothes that he got from his coworker of like hand-me-downs for us kids from his coworker from her kids and I don't remember exactly where the shirt came from but one way or another I ended up with this secondhand shirt and it was a Fort Jackson South Carolina shirt and I would wear it to bed like a like a night shirt well later on in life oh my allergies later on in life um, when I was 19 years old, I decided to um, run away, basically, into the army. And um, that's a whole story, but guess where I ended up going? Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And it's not even like I like picked that like for any reason or anything. I just told them that I wanted a uh, what's called trade dock because um, I didn't want to get deployed. I was running away simply just to get away from my abusive family and abusive boyfriend and to hopefully get some college money. I wanted as short a, a contract as possible and I wanted to be at a trade dock where I would not be deployed to, you know, to go to a different country or anything. And so it ended up being Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Um, a little interesting, right? So then later on in life, I go to graduate school and guess where I end up going for graduate school? Georgia. Um, and then while I was living in Georgia for graduate school, um, my first summer there, I actually took a, a trip driving up the East Coast up home to Jersey, and um, I, I planned it out in such a way so that every uh, night I would stay in a different city along the East Coast. And so um, I stayed in... What was it, Charlotte? No, not Charlotte. Charleston? Charleston. Like, right on the shore. One night I stayed in Charleston, and another night I stayed, I think, in Savannah. And, um, it was interesting, because both nights, it was like back-to-back, -back, I ended up going to these karaoke places, and I sang, and that used to be my thing back in the day, by the way, like, for a while. After my divorce, I would hang out in the karaoke scene and what's fu what, what's funny while I'm at it while I'm telling the story is two nights in a row at both karaoke bars in Charleston and, and Savannah I had the KJ the karaoke jockey or whatever you want to call it uh, offer me a job to like co jockey with him or whatever because what they often do is they sing and he you know he enjoyed my singing and both of them did um, I had those business cards I don't know if I still have them but anyway nonetheless so I think it was, was it Savannah? 
I think it was Savannah. Anyway, I end up hanging out with this guy all night in the karaoke bar from Australia. And I could barely make out. I could barely decipher a word he was saying. I had to keep asking him to repeat himself because he has such a thick accent. Um, but he was taking a tour of America, which to me was so like foreign of a concept. Like, really? Is that what foreigners do? They take a tour of America? And, um, and then he went on to tell me how his favorite place in America, how his tour in America was almost done. And his favorite like city or place was Denver, Colorado. And I was like, oh, really? You know, like I knew nothing about Denver, really. You know, um, the West never interested me. And so it, he said how he loved to uh, go skiing and blah, blah, blah. And, which the skiing really isn't in Denver, but I guess he meant like the, the the general Denver metropolis. But even even then, the skiing is nowhere. It's not really considered part of the Denver metropolis, um, because the skiing is like way out in the mountains, which is like a whole. It's like for people who live here, it's considered like a whole different region in a sense. But I it, it depends, I guess. Whatever. So. Um, graduate school, I had been there two years, and, uh, I decided that it really wasn't working out, and then right after I decided that it wasn't working out, um, and, like, my, my plan was to take a sabbatical from my graduate program, and I had just informed, um, one of the heads of the program of that, that I was very heavily considering taking a break, taking a sabbatical, I didn't really want to be part of the mental health, the like secular mental health field. I knew I had a, a greater calling on my life than putting people in a box so that they can be, you know, so that insurance companies would pay for their overall non-effective treatment and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and so long story short, I'm not going to get into the whole story, but where do I end up coming? Denver, Colorado. Um, so... And then even living here, I've noticed, even here just living in Colorado, the Lord would often take me to like, to some local place to like visit it first for some reason or whatever, and then I'd end up like moving nearby there. Like that happened years back. Um, I had gone to this one mall uh, out in like the Golden area, and then I ended up moving like right nearby that mall. or fairly near that mall. Um, and so I've started to kind of notice these things in my life. And I was just kind of recollecting this and discussing it with Holy Spirit. And I just thought I would share it with you guys. Um, you know, Holy Spirit will tell you years ahead of time places that you will end up going and you won't even realize it <laughs> um, until it happens. And then you're like, wait a minute. You know, um, so just a fascinating little thing to ponder and pray about. Um, but just be mindful, you know, that if you end up just visiting someplace and passing, so to speak, you may end up going to live there or whatever. So um, the verse that comes to mind is that verse in the book of Acts. I want to say it's like chapter 17. 1720 maybe ish off the top of my head but it basically says that um that that god ordains the places where people will you know live and have their being and all of that um long ahead of time you know and um or he knows where you'll be ahead of time you know um because I somewhat have a sense that I was supposed to go to Colorado Springs instead of Denver, but I ended up going to Denver. But God knows what decisions you're going to end up making ahead of time, you know. Um, and they, they may not always be in alignment with His will, you know. Um, and it looks like now, after seven years, now I'll be going to Colorado Springs, it seems. Um, nothing's official yet. I haven't given you guys an update because it's not official, but... Um, 
which is just interesting. But anyway, so just just a fascinating little thing that I've noticed with Holy Spirit. So, you know, something to ponder. I think it's cool. So thought I would share. All right. I bless you all in Jesus' name.